Hi, welcome to Revenue Marketing Television. I am your host, Jeff Pedowitz, President and CEO of the Pedowitz Group. Today, we have Alexandra Shapiro, who is top executive at BigCommerce and formerly at PayPal as well. Alexandra, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. So you've had uh, quite a fascinating career, uh, a lot, certainly on, on the payer side. And what are some of the trends that you've seen uh, as a marketing executive over the last few years? I see a lot of innovation in marketing technology and significant investment in capabilities that we now as marketers have at our disposable, at our disposal, which then changes the way we market, the way we target, and the way we ultimately deliver information and messaging to our customers. Okay, and then strategically, what are some of the key priorities you've been focused on over the last year? Our number one priority is drive growth. Um, and whether it was at PayPal or at BigCommerce, which is a SaaS e-commerce platform, or my previous experience in banking, the work of the, the work of marketing is around driving profitable growth for the company. So it means understanding our target customers, how we understand their pain points and deliver value to the customers, and then build profitable go-to-market strategies that allow us to achieve business results. Fundamentally, I believe that marketing strategy and business strategy have to be aligned really tightly, and in coordination, marketing can be used to drive business growth. So as you think about this, this concept of business accountability, how are you building that culture within your teams? It starts with three different things. First is actually it starts with understanding goals. What is the business targets we're trying to achieve? And then having those targets, those goals align with marketing goals. There's a very direct correlation between business goals and marketing goals. And so understanding those business targets, that's at the very beginning. That's the first thing. The second thing is taking the targets, the highest level goals, and cascading them down to all of my team members in marketing, all the way to the marketing channels that they manage. So there's a very clear link in accountability between total revenue number for the company and expectation around revenue growth from a particular marketing channel. And then lastly, using data to make the right decisions to understand how do we optimize our marketing channels to drive the maximum results for the business. We hear a lot of, you mentioned in the very beginning, you talked about technology and the role that's played. When you think about this concept of digital transformation across the enterprise, what, what role does marketing play in that? Marketing is throughout, is at the very beginning of the customer journey and stays throughout the customer life cycle. Initially, marketing determines a strategy around what business segments we are trying to serve. Marketing is defining target segments, the value proposition, the segment uh, personas, their buying journey. Marketing uses customer insights and data, combination of those two things, to really understand who should the company target. Then the next step, marketing is involved in building out go-to-market strategy, working very closely with the product team with sales to determine the right sales and marketing channel mix to acquire certain customers. And then marketing is deeply involved, again, with sales and product to nurture the prospects through the buyer journey across the customer life cycle and get them started on, on, on the product and later on support with onboarding. So I would say marketing is pretty heavily involved in the initial strategy piece in acquiring customers. What's interesting is later on, once a customer is acquired, then marketing can help get the customer on board, getting up and running. Um, and this has to be done again in combination with a great product experience. And marketing later helps engage customers through their life cycle to reduce churn, to drive higher upsell, and ultimately build customer loyalty. Excellent. Just pause there for a second. I just want to make sure it's recording on a split screen. So it is. How am I doing? So you're doing great. Yeah. So, yeah, it just it's it's weird because I'm seeing your video twice. So it was just it was like, <laughs> usually I see it. I see it, I guess well. <laughs> okay, but you're doing fantastic. So keep it up. Okay. Um, so 
let's talk a little bit about the customer experience. So this is big buzzword. Everybody talks about it over the last couple of years. How do you actually put it into practice? How do you operationalize it across the enterprise? Because it's one thing to talk about your customers and the experience, but then it's quite another, right, to build the systems, the touch points, the processes, change the culture. So what, what's your take on that? It starts with understanding the customer and understanding full customer set of needs and the broader context around the customer. In our case, we work with business customers, which um, means as a as an e-commerce platform, as a payments provider, in all of those situations, we're not the only technology solution that they're using. So it's important to understand the full customer context, what other providers they use, and how our technology solves a part of the puzzle, and how other providers in the broader ecosystems comes in into the picture. It's also important to build deep data profile of your customer using third party tools and on uh, behavior with you. So on us behavior to build a deeper picture and understanding of the customer. Because the ultimate goal is to deliver the right message, the right experience, the right solution to the customer during the right stage of their customer life cycle. And so understanding the customer through a combination of deep insights and data is, is a starting point. Later on, we it's important for us to create great experiences in partnership with product and again deliver personalized and relevant messages throughout the customer experience. We can use as simple tools as NPS survey to understand customer feedback and actually read the survey results to determine, well, what can we do? What can we improve? And that's probably one of the um, most useful <laughs> exercises to go through is to actually listen to the feedback that customers give you on your platform and use that information to create better product experiences and to deliver customized messaging. One more thing I'll add was, again, there's, with the innovation and technologies, we now have new opportunities to understand data and to test and optimize. And so using test and learn approach, you can optimize multiple experiences and understand how does the customer interact with your product and what drives the greatest level of engagement and, um, and ultimately the right results for your business. Uh, great answer. Very, very comprehensive. Clearly, you've been spending a lot of time <laughs> uh, working with customers, as you should, right? So tell me, tell me a little bit. I mean, you've, you've built so many teams over the years, and I'm just curious as to what do you look for I mean, uh, in terms of, is there a certain type of talent? Are you looking for generalists? Are you looking for specific people? What's your approach to building out your organization? The approach actually changes from time to time, depending on the company and the needs of the company. But in general, I look for two things. I look at what and how. First one, I look at skills. Does a person have the right skills to do the job? Does it have the right experience? And that's pretty important. Um, recently, I've been moving to a structural model that uses a center of excellence approach. That means that I'm looking for folks who have deep expertise of the marketing channel that they manage. So that's really important, understanding that they have the right skills. But the second part is equally important. It's understanding the how they do the work. How do they approach? How do they work with others? How do they make decisions? And I think at this point, it's important to have both. You cannot just have the skills, but lack the how. In the environment that we work today, and we focus so much on collaboration, it is important to have both. And then as I hire talent and I build talent, I also uh, try to understand individual strengths. We go through deep exercises to understand the strengths, and then we build development plans that allow us to leverage our strengths. I'm a huge believer in leveraging strengths. So, um, and I'm doing extensive exercises with the team to understand each other's strengths and how we can bring all of our different strengths to solve business problems. That's great. So um, tell me a little bit about how you approach technology because there is clearly so much of it today. <laughs> and um, what do you, how do you make decisions on what do you buy, what do you get rid of? Um, how, you know, 
what business cases does it solve? How do you train your team? And what's your approach to bringing technology in? Um, so I use technology in four or five critical ways. The first way I use technology is to help me improve my targeting, to understand the fit. When I talked about segments, I need to make sure that I'm using technology tools that are available to us to help us target the right segments. And so what I'm trying then is to look at the right technology that will get us, um, will enable us to do that. So that's the first use of technology. I'm less looking at providers as more what are the latest solutions that are available that can provide data enrichment or better targeting um, and a combination of the tools. So ultimately I can do a better job targeting. That's the first use of technology. My second use of technology is to understand their intent to understand behaviors that will drive them to be the right prospect for us at the right point in time. It could be a combination of behavior with us, how they engage with our content. It could be um, understanding of how they engage with competitor content, if that's available to me, or do you use competitor products? Um, but understanding the intent is very important, and that's probably the two things that are immediate uses of technology. So the scoring technology that is available is and can be used to overlay so that the right leads are sent to our um, sales team, for example. Okay. The third use of technology is to optimize my marketing spend. As we invest across a broad range of marketing channels, it is important to understand which of the channels drives the ultimate results for us. And linking all the way from um, keywords that are used uh, maybe in the initial stages of the buyer journey later on to the revenue data once the customer is onboarding. So making that full end-to-end -end linkage is very important because that allows us to optimize in our marketing channel mix and invest in our most valuable channels. Technology is key here. Um, it's technology connecting different data systems. Uh, attribution technology, uh, analytics supported by technology, but overall understanding our eye of different channels and different segments. Um, and then the last piece is personalization. So how can we leverage again uh, the idea of delivering the right content to the right segment at the right time? This is again where technology comes in. It could be optimized through test and learn. It could be bringing third-party technology tools into the mix. Um, so that messages are relevant and targeted based on the audience. All of your answers are so comprehensive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, you, you mentioned content a lot. And one thing I'm curious about is, so we've all been instructed over these last few years, get more content out, more content. Do you think there's too much content out there? And, and how do you know when you're getting the right type of content in front of your customers? And what's your approach to organizing it? Because I think it's, it's pretty easy to overspend, isn't it? Yeah, so we um, we are very lucky in my most recent uh, role at Big Commerce. We brought in a, a very strong um, uh, content marketing team. And um, sorry, can I try that again? Yeah, go ahead. Because I don't want to uh, specifically Big Commerce. My apologies, they asked me not to be specific. No problem. Yep. Um, OK. I think ultimately you determine if you have the right content, if you have the right users engaging with it. Um, and uh, it, it, it all has to be connected back to your customer segment. Who are you trying to target? What is their pain point? How your solution is helping address those pain points and how can you leverage content to bring those customers to the buying journey? So by understanding how customers engage with the content, it's probably one of the best ways to determine if this content is relevant, is it solving um, questions that are top of mind. This content doesn't have to be about your solution. It could be a more general solution, but at least as long as you're engaging with the audience and start to build deeper understanding of the customer, start collecting additional information, then you know you're having the right type of content. If you're not seeing that feedback, if you're not seeing that engagement, there's something wrong with your content strategy. Go back, think about the customers, the target segment you're trying to solve, what matters to them, and then start developing content that resonates. Great, great feedback. So 
if you were to um, advise your fellow marketers in, in three buckets and where they should spend their time, the strategy, um, the planning, and the execution, where should they spend, like if you were going to divide it into 100, where should they allocate each of that percentage of time? So the nice thing about marketing, we're actually a full loop. So we do the planning, we know our goals, we build our strategies that align to the goals, and then we quickly take those strategies and execute, and then use the results to see if we're actually meeting the goals. So when I think about marketing, I always think of this circle, this loop. And the, the right answer is it depends, but it also has to be a feedback loop. So that the execution is your building. It's very important you measure that execution so you actually know if it's meeting your strategy and it's delivering you the right kind of goals. So the right answer, I think, it has to be a closed uh, feedback loop. Okay, good answer. So uh, <laughs> in closing, any advice that you would give to your fellow marketing executives out there? There's been a ton of really fantastic innovation in, in, in terms of how we can use data customer insights, personalization, and latest marketing technology to deliver the right content, the right, uh, the, the right message to our customers and prospects, and ultimately drive much greater growth to the business. So that would be my advice. Um, start with your customer, build as deep understanding of your customers as you can, and then use the information that you collect in third-party data to deliver the right message to the right customer at the right time. Very well said. Well, Alexandra, thank you so much for your insights and thank you for being on the program today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You bet.